Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. When it comes to housing, I've been told I have some extreme views. To be honest, I don't think they're extreme, but I've been told through many, many, many YouTube comments that they are indeed extreme, whether I mean them to be or not. First and foremost, when I run my net worth statement, I don't include my house. And I know this flies in the face of the strict definition of net worth, which is simply assets minus liabilities. Your home is an asset, so it makes sense to list it there. And if you have an outstanding mortgage, you list that with the liabilities. So I wholeheartedly agree, this makes sense when you're following the strict definition of net worth but I still don't do it. And it's simply because it doesn't serve my purposes at this phase of my life. At this phase of my life, my goal is to build up assets, assets that have the ability to generate income streams for my family so that one day we can be financially independent and not have to rely on a paycheck. And in my eyes, my primary home doesn't help with that. So I don't include it when I run my net worth statement. If you wanna run your net worth statement and not include your home, that's great. If you wanna run yours and include your home, that's wonderful too. It's really up to you. Or you could do two separate net worth statements, one that includes your home and one that doesn't get the best of both worlds. Like I said, it's really up to you. My other opinion that gets a lot of feedback is when I say home ownership is not essential to wealth creation. And when I say this, I mean that whether you're a homeowner or whether you rent or no matter what your circumstances are, you should be living below your means. You should be putting money aside every single month and putting it towards building a better, brighter future through investing. I think building up your investment is a far greater predictor of financial freedom than simply owning a home. And maybe I'm biased in this one because I was able to build up a seven figure net worth before ever buying my home. Now, when I say all this, I certainly don't wanna come across as anti home ownership. That's certainly not the case. I'm a homeowner. I think being a homeowner is wonderful. And I think there's great value in being a homeowner. Actually, I think there's far more value in being a homeowner than my previous videos have given credit for. So this video, is an attempt to rectify that and assess what the true value of owning a home is. But first, if we're gonna run an example, we've gotta make some assumptions. So let's assume that you have a $400,000 home because that's roughly the average price of a home right now. And being that most first time home buyers are in their 30s, we'll assume that that's when this person bought their home. We'll also assume that our homeowner uses a 30 year mortgage because that's what 80% of borrowers do. So we'll assume that the home gets paid off right before a traditional retirement age. So basically we wanna gauge the value of going into retirement with a fully paid off home and the impact that that would have on your savings and your investments. Because if you go into retirement without a fully paid off home, you're likely going to have to have far greater saved up so you can cover your costs of housing throughout your golden years. However, if you go into retirement with a fully paid off home, you would likely need far less in savings and investments in order to reach financial freedom. At first glance, going into retirement with a fully paid off home, assuming a $400,000 home, would be the value of having to not pay the mortgage, say anywhere from $1,500 per month to $2,700 per month. Based on what rate you had with your mortgage, looking at mortgage rates from 2.5% all the way up to 7%. So that mortgage would cost you anywhere from 18,000 a year to 32,400 a year. And if we use the rule of 4%, in order to have a nest egg large enough to simply cover that mortgage, you would need to retire with an additional $450,000 to $810,000. So right off the bat, that paid off home is looking mighty attractive as it allows you to reach financial freedom at a much lower number. Keep in mind, even with a fully paid off home, you would still face other home related expenses, think property tax, repairs, insurance, things like that. This is simply intended to look solely at the mortgage. Now, of course, if our retiree went into retirement with a mortgage, how much extra they would need would really depend on how much longer they have left on their mortgage. But 44% of retirees go into retirement with a mortgage. And of this group, 20% plan to have the mortgage paid off within a year. 32% plan to carry that mortgage for more than eight years, and 17% plan to never pay off that mortgage. If you plan to have your mortgage paid off in the first year or two of retirement, you're gonna need far less of an investment buffer than if you plan on carrying that mortgage for, well, 
ever. For instance, if you simply have 12 months of payments left, you could simply have those 12 months built up in reserves. Whereas someone who's planning on carrying that mortgage with them for the rest of their days might be better suited following something like the rule of 4%. Alternatively, what if our retiree was not a homeowner? What if they were a renter? If we simply look at the national average, according to the World Population Review, the average cost of renting a single family home in the US is $2,018 a month. But here's the thing with rent. Rent doesn't stay constant. We can likely assume that rents would increase at a rate where they keep pace with inflation. So about 3% per year or so. Now let's factor in life expectancy. Being that the average life expectancy is 77 years in the US, and being that we're comparing this to a homeowner who pays off their home at the age of 66, our renter would need to foot the bill for rent for at least 11 years. So that rent in the first year would cost you $24,000, but that cost would increase 3% every single year. 11 years down the road, that same rental would likely cost $2,700 a month or about $32,500 a year. Following the rule of 4% means that our retiree would need an additional $605,000 invested above and beyond what our homeowner would need in investments in order to simply sustain the ability to pay their rent. Remember when using the rule of 4%, it does mean that you get to increase your withdrawals at the rate of inflation every single year. But it also means that if your rent increases at a rate that outpaces inflation, you can expect your budget to run much tighter in other areas. So that fully paid off $400,000 home has a value of 150% more in terms of what you would otherwise need invested in order to cover the cost of renting a home in your retirement years. Even if we factor in things like home repairs, which are generally assumed to be about 1% of the home's purchase price, so in our situation, about $4,000 a year on a $400,000 home, or things like property taxes, which could be a couple thousand dollars to several thousand dollars a year, a short-term renter might not be as impacted by these, but a long-term renter would absolutely feel the burden of these as a landlord would likely build these costs into the rent. So while I like to say that the renter doesn't foot this bill directly and it's less impactful on those short-term renters, the long-term renter would find that these costs were more built into their rent. Now, if our renter instead opted for an apartment, the average cost to rent an apartment in the US is about $1,700 a month, which would mean that our retiree would need at least an additional $510,000 in investments to cover their apartment costs in their retirement. Still a pretty significant sum. And these examples make a heck of a lot of assumptions, starting with home price, rental price, life expectancy, you name it. So of course the goal here isn't to paint a picture of any one's individual circumstance, but rather to serve as a launching pad and to get you thinking and perhaps consider running your own numbers and see what situation is best for you. Because remember, finance is personal. There's no doubt that going into retirement with a fully paid off home greatly reduces your expenses. As for most of us, our home is the greatest expense we face. And likewise, it's going to reduce the amount that you would need saved up in your nest egg to support your lifestyle. Not only is there great financial value in having a fully paid off home, but it can give you great peace of mind. Sure, you don't have to deal with rising rent costs, but what if your landlord decided one day that he wanted to sell this home? You would have to look for a new place to live. Having a fully paid off home can easily be a half million dollars or more in value compared to having to continue paying a mortgage or rent in retirement. And not having to save up an additional half million dollars for retirement can open a lot of doors on when you're able to step away from the workforce. Now, with all of that being said, obviously a home is incredibly valuable, but it is still only one piece of the financial puzzle. It is still imperative that you are saving and investing and otherwise building up income streams that can support you on your journey towards financial independence. And while having a fully paid off home is amazing, it is not a substitute for having investments to draw on to live the life you want to live. Consider that for the average person at or in retirement, their home value accounts for almost two thirds of their entire net worth. Having a fully paid off home is absolutely wonderful, but for all of the things it can provide you, it can't provide you an income stream in retirement. Unless, of course, you refinance your home or take out a HELOC and 
Why would you want to do that? It's hard enough to pay off your home the first time. Why pay it off twice or use your home as a rental or do a reverse mortgage? So those do create options, not necessarily the best ones. It's important to keep your portfolio in check. A home is a piece of the puzzle, not the full puzzle. So if your goal is to own a home, that's wonderful. Nothing better than a paid off home. But don't neglect your investments simply because you have a home. It serves as a safe haven and a shelter, which are all very important, but not the only things that matter on your journey to financial independence. So no matter what your circumstance, whether you're a renter or a homeowner, don't neglect your investments. You have to keep investing to build wealth for your future so that one day you can reach financial independence. What are your thoughts? Leave them in a comment down below. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing or if you know of someone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I'll see you soon. Bye.